Singapore's solar deployment has grown significantly with its installed capacity increasing by about 10 times in the last seven years. The Energy Market Authority says the country is on track to achieve its goal of at least two gigawatt peak of solar deployment by 2030. A demand for solar panel installations has gone up by five times in the seven years from 2016 to 2023, and it is mainly driven by non-residential demand. Town councils and public housing common services are the top contributors with more than 3,600 panels installed by 2023. And this is followed by the private sector and public service agencies with more than 210 installed. For private properties, more than 3,300 sites have been fitted with solar panels and this is more than double the number of installations in 2020. As of February this year, about 3,900 HDB blocks have been installed with solar panels. The remaining blocks will be installed in batches over the next three years. Now, solar energy in HDB estates are used to power services like lifts, lights and water pumps. Excess energy is fed into the power grid. Now, so far, solar capacity across HDB estates have reached 455 megawatt peak. That's equivalent to powering about 114,000 four-room flats. This is almost 85% of HDB solar target of 540 megawatt peak by 2030. While well, Singapore's electricity tariffs continues to be driven by gas prices, the falling costs of solar panels may offer a solution in bringing prices down. But where should these panels be installed in Landscast Singapore? Now, for more, we're now joined by Dr. Thomas Reindel. He is Deputy CEO of the Solar Energy Research Institute of Singapore at the National University of Singapore. Dr. Reindel, thank you so much for being here with us. So, as we know, solar energy, it is projected uh, to meet about 10% of Singapore's electricity needs uh, mm -hmm. by the year 2050. My first question to you would be, how much more potential is there for residential solar? So for residential solar, that was already part of the assessment which we did for the solar PV roadmap for Singapore, mm. which uh, concluded with uh, around 10% of the uh, electricity uh, demand in 2050. So that is already counted in for. So what we have to be a bit more creative for the case of Singapore is we have to think out of the box. We have to think uh, beyond classic installations, rooftop installations. Uh, we have to look into floating solar, we potentially even have to look into larger canopies. Can we overarch larger canopies uh, across uh, um, flood canals, for example, maybe even across some of the uh, larger building blocks? Mm. Can we do more in our uh, marine waters? Can we do more floating solar in marine spaces? So we have to push the boundary so there's nothing ready off the shelf. And this is also part of uh, our research to push the envelope and make sure that we have solutions that help Singapore deploy more solar power. And there are so many options for us to consider. Uh, according to the EMA statistic report last year, uh, the private sector is one of the driving forces behind the growth in Singapore's mm. solar deployment. Should the focus be on how to increase uh, the solar deployment to private areas? Or should we also look elsewhere, for example, HDB blocks mm. or industrial areas? Yeah, when I look at the numbers, because we assessed uh, virtually every building in Singapore, we assessed 130,000 buildings for their potential for, uh, for a rooftop and building uh, mm. integrated photovoltaics. And the by, by far largest portion is industrial and commercial, mm. uh, followed by HDB. So residential is definitely an important factor because everyone has to put the shoulder behind the wheel. But uh, by and large, we have to look into industrial, commercial and HDB. And as we just heard, HDB is, doing the, uh, is already doing a lot of work. And in a few years, almost every HDB will have solar power. But we have to do more in the industrial sector, in the large areas in Tuas, in Churung West, where there is plenty of factories and workshops mm -hmm. that can easily deploy solar panels. Okay. Um, Minister Tan Si Ling mentioned mm. in his speech in Parliament uh, earlier this week that solar panel costs that have fallen 82% um, between 2010 mm. and 2022. 
how much more will the price of solar panels go down? And what would be uh, the key factors driving this decline? So the solar panel costs have done, come down indeed dramatically. Mm. And they have reached a, a bottom which will likely not go further down because otherwise nobody makes money in the industry anymore. So the focus going forward will, will rather be on increasing the efficiency because solar panels today are so cost effective that the generation cost, if you have a large factory roof and you install a megawatt, for example, in an in, in a, in a easy to install uh, factory in Tuas or Jurong, you can generate uh, solar electricity for about six to seven cents per kilowatt hour. If you look into a private landed residential home, this will be more expensive because it's a smaller system. Mm. Then we are talking about maybe 15 cents per kilowatt hour generation cost. And this compares to the 30 cent per kilowatt hour, which we pay, which is the current regulated tariff. So solar makes economic sense and is uh, by far the cheapest option of generating electricity today in many parts of the world, including Singapore. But to what extent will price continue to be uh, a major factor for meeting Singapore's uh, solar power deployment targets? Uh, it, it is already the most cost-effective way, so price will not be the issue. So that's why we are looking into increasing efficiency to get uh, more capacity into the, uh, into the installations and more electric solar electricity being generated. Mm. And then there are other factors which we need to consider. We want to also decarbonize the electricity sector. We want to do our part for, for uh, mitigating the effects of climate change. And there's also a, a geopolitical aspect to some degree, sure. because every uh, kilowatt hour which we generate in Singapore with our own uh, resources, we don't need to import, we, need to, we don't need to ask anyone, we, need to, we don't need to pay anyone. So there's also this aspect that we, it helps a little bit with getting independent in our electricity supply. In terms of the technology mm. itself, uh, Dr. Reinder, what is the latest in the market? And is it expected to be a game changer, particularly mm. for Singapore? Um, in terms of technology, there are two aspects which we have to look at. One is the evolutionary development, which happens in companies uh, because it's a semiconductor technology. That's a little bit like... Uh, every time you buy a new laptop computer, you expect it to be faster and cheaper. And this mm -hmm. is this evolutionary development which you see in solar technology as well. And then there are revolutionary steps. They don't happen very often, but currently we are working on one of these revolutionary steps. And the next uh, big thing in solar technology will be so-called tandem solar cells, where you put two solar cells on top of each other and then together they convert uh, the, like, the sunlight more effectively and then they generate more uh, yield out of the same area. And this is, then, this is literally called tandem solar cell because it's equivalent like a tandem bicycle. If you have two riders and if they run in sync, then they go faster than a, a single rider. And at Ceres, we are also we are one of the leading institutes in the world and mm -hmm. we have a big project together with uh, the local manufacturer REC Solar where we really want to push the boundary and see how far can we get to drive this innovation uh, in Singapore and worldwide. Well, it's definitely interesting times for solar energy here in Singapore. Yes. Uh, Dr. Reindel, thank you so much for your time and thoughts. Uh, that was My Dr. Best. Thomas Reindel from the Solar Energy Research Institute of Singapore. Thank you. Thank you.